What up, fam? On this episode of the Snapback Sports Pod, we preview Thursday Night Football, Falcons, Patriots, rematch of the 28 3 Super Bowl, and I'm giving out a lock. We pick the people's pick 'em. We chat about Stephen A. Smith's comments on the Warriors and the Nets before we preview week 11 in the NFL and get what the puck from Eagleson. Snapback, fam, new app. The Baltimore Let's get it. Ravens select. Lamar Jackson. I'm a rave. His own. All year. Every year. Jackson takes it himself. Oh! He broke his ankles! A pass! Oh, blocked by James! Auburn's gonna win the football game! Auburn's gonna win the football game! For the Philadelphia Eagles, the long drought is over. Bryant put the jumper. He oh, got it! Oh, And the Lakers lead! What up, fam? I'm your host, Jack Sederman. Joining me today, and as always, my co-host and longtime best friend, Abe Granoff. Abe, what is on your mind today? Nailed it. About time. I feel like it's been a while since you nailed the intro, so two points for you. Today, I want to take the time to use what's on my mind to discuss being an adult, right? We're 25. I'm going to be 26 in a few months, and a lot of people will think, that's not an adult. Mm, yeah, it is. <laughs> Part of being adult is you, you you go food shopping for yourself, right? And when you go food shopping, chances are you get some eggs. And if you are an adult, the adult thing to do, it's not even being an adult. It's just being having a clue is to check the eggs to make sure that one of them is not cracked. And if they are cracked, you put it down and you pick up a new carton. And you tweeted yesterday that you just learned that adults do this. Do, do I need to respond to that? Yeah, I just learned that people waste their time checking. Waste their, eggs. waste their time. Yes. Waste. Waste of time. Okay. You know let's the do, statistic this. where, you know the Would statistic. you rather, I have a good would you rather. I have a good would you rather. Would you rather get home and check your carton of eggs to see that three or four of them are cracked Three or four would be a lot of cracking. Let's happens, be clear. happens for sure. No. Or would you rather just hand three hundred dollars over to the Green Bay Packers organization in exchange for absolutely, positively nothing? Okay. Well, first of all, you're an idiot. That could be unrelated to that. Would you rather? That's probably just. Uh, that's like when someone says not financial advice as a disclaimer. Like Abe's an idiot. Probably here's a lot of advice. Level. Asterisks at the bottom. Just yeah. so you know, I'm an idiot. <laughs> exactly. Um, so, first of all, trying to act like you're like this big, mature, grown up. No, I just, just checked my eggs. To, Right, but who taught you that? Like, I was just supposed to know uh, that. That's yeah, an assumption. Like, I'm sorry, your mother is nice and mine isn't. Like, I, I had to learn that on my own from watching another adult do it. Number two, three or four eggs being cracked is a high number because I've gotten home and had eggs cracked because I don't check, quite frankly. Uh, but rarely is it three or four. It's one or two at the worst. Leakage, I will say, is, is bad. But one or Leakage two Leakage is most. worse. That's, like, nasty. Two dollars, you cut down twelve eggs. Two eggs, it's about forty cents. Stop! Pump, you, pump the brakes. Pump the brakes. Where do you live, Jack? I live in New York. New York. Find me one fucking supermarket in New York where you can get twelve eggs for two dollars. Eggs are not nope. expensive. Nope. Eggs are. I'll, nope. I'll go buy eggs right now, live in this. No podcast. wonder your shit's cracked. You're buying two dollar eggs. Okay, let's call it four dollars. Four dollars divided by twelve. You're at about. 42 cents, cents 42 cents per, and you've got 84 cents you've now sacrificed. Look, I'm not the wealthiest person in the world. You're the one that makes all the money from the podcast. You're a millionaire. I'm not. But this statistic feels very similar to the amount of time it takes Bill Gates to pick up a $100 bill. He's made that money back in that action. Similar to me, it just is not worth my time. Not to mention, ever since I discovered... It's not about a time thing. It's about an annoyance. But it's not annoying to me if I get 10 eggs out of 12. That's a pretty yeah, but how good many, how, many, how many eggs are you eating on the average breakfast meal? I eat three. And that, that carries me three days. It's already an inconvenience because well, I have to buy... Days. That would carry you four days. Not if I lose two of them. Exactly. And then it's three and then you just have one sitting around. It's just, it's but annoying. I have to buy for, for multiple days anyway. So I'm already getting 24. So now if I'm down to 20, I'm covered for about a week anyways. Point being, I see these 
freaking nerds checking to see yeah, if their how did eggs you, are how cracked. How did you learn that? How did you find Because I'm going to get my eggs and I see another adult check, put it back, check. And I'm like, okay, that makes a lot of sense. I didn't know. I truthfully <laughs> did not know you were allowed to do that. Like Bro, I was that's like, like, that's like when I, when I used to go food shopping with my mom as a kid, like the grape section is like yeah. open and you can just like take grapes out of there. Right. Well, that's that's literally like no, individual you, grapes. Yeah, you never just threw it a grape back. No, that that would be stealing. You can't. You're allowed you can't. to do that. No, you. What? You're allowed to do that, dude. I actually think you're an idiot. Well, I already said that. You're kidding, right? Like that's not acceptable. That that's like supermarket theft. etiquette. No, it's supermarket etiquette. No, 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 no. no. That is in, in a completely different category than what we're talking. It's about. just to make sure that it's like you. It's 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 like a don't ask, don't tell type thing. Like you wait, you're take... actually tasting it. You're doing a taste, a live tasting, yeah. like you're a connoisseur of grapes. <laughs> well, it's just making sure. This you're is a good why batch. I don't want to associate with that type of person. I did also learn that. Did you know you can take like if there's eight bananas all together by like the stuff, like you can just take f- four of them. Yeah, I do it all I the time. I didn't know that either, but I learned that as well from watching and observing. Anyway, since Did I just Did you discovered... go to the supermarket just to like observe people? No, I'm just a I'm you know, I, I'm a curious person. I like to see what others are doing. Shout out uh the Trader Joe's by me. I met someone from the Snapback fam. Said what up? He's a Raptors fan. Mm, poor Not guy. from Canada though. Anyways, uh what I was gonna say is I get the eggs now and I check five consecutive times, not a singular cracked egg. Do you know the amount of time I've wasted lifting it up, looking, and moving on with my deck? Eleven about seconds. About ten seconds. About ten seconds. And you know what? I fucking hate it. So <laughs> with that being said, we move on. Thursday night football, Falcons, Patriots, rematch of that beautiful Super Bowl 28 to 3. Everyone knows it. New quarterback for the Pats, Macquery Jones. Not new. He like, as opposed to the quarterback who played in that Super Bowl. Oh, okay. Feel me? Macri Jones. Man, they're kind of rookie, the same. <laughs> rookie of the year Kind favorite. of both system, guys. And Abe, tell the fam what I'm going to do for Thursday night. Jack's going to win you all a lot of money, plain and simple. Um, what Jack is planning on doing this week is he's getting back to his old ways, right? He used to uh, bet good teams to beat bad teams. That's now become bet on bad teams to beat worse teams. And he used to bet on the Falcons a lot. And if you uh, don't live under a rock, you'd understand that betting on the Falcons not only takes a toll on your wallet, it takes a toll on your mental health and the way that they lose. And Jack said Mm. to me before this podcast started, he goes, you know the Falcons are going to win this game, right? And I said, nope. He says, oh, that's weird, because they are. They are. Like, they're obviously winning. Like, I, I don't know if I've ever seen a bigger lock in my life there you than go, the Falcons. Fam. So we are all getting rich and retiring tomorrow and betting on the Patriots because Jack is fully back to his old ways and betting on the Falcons. No, no, no. The, this is a different Falcons team. It's a different coach. They will come through. This is a, just a great spot. This and is all a different the Falcons team. The Falcons team I'm is just, four and six I'm not or ex- whatever they I'm are. Not, yeah, normally they'd be like three and seven at this point in the season. Who they lose to last week? Not the Eagles this year. They got blown out by the Cowboys. I mean, you've got a red hot Patriots team who are going to win the division. Mm-hmm. They're Super Bowl contenders. Yep. They're they're they're, they're the, Patriots. the Patriots. They're yeah, yeah, they're the Patriots versus the Falcons. They're the Falcons. It's Matt Ryan. Calvin Ridley's not playing. They don't have Julio Jones. No, uh, they just got maybe. blown out. They just got blown out by the Cowboys who lost at home to the Broncos, right? Okay. You know what sounds very familiar to that? Tell me. Ravens Dolphins a fucking week ago, people. <laughs> Short week on the road. Hot team against a dog shit team. This is how the NFL works. Nope. You know what I haven't pulled out this year yet? What? You know what I haven't? I pulled it out about four uh, times last uh, year. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, no, no, no. I'm not going that far. I'm not going that far. No 0.0% guarantees. You No, but I pulled it out four times last year, and it's this tweet format. If you think the Patriots are beating the Falcons, then you don't know how the NFL works. And I may pull it out for tomorrow night. Now, you do have to consider. What's your record with those tweets? 4-0 Four and zero last year. You want to look at it? Go back, look at the numbers. Let, let me let me just do a quick Twitter search. I I don't know if I worded Fine. every bet me, single. Bet me fifty straight up. Pat you Falcons. don't know at Jack Settlement. Let's see if anything comes up. Come on, come on. 
Uh, did you know they don't have cheesesteaks in Canada? Okay, that's fair. Uh, Chris Paul chokes in the playoffs. That's fair. Uh, you don't know Texas football if you don't think this will be a tease of a one possession game. Fast forward to 31 24, OU third and seven conversion. That was last year versus OU. The game went into double overtime. Okay, that's pretty good there. If you don't handicap yourself, you're down. Uh, that's mm, motivational mm. bullshit. I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll continue to look. Apparently, I tweet, you don't know at a lot of people. Uh, so I'm going to have to go back a little deeper here. But if you think you know how the NFL works, you know that the Falcons will win this so game. So bet me $50 straight up. I'll give well, you a discount I, on our standard bet. Oh, they're six and a half point underdogs. I need a little odds. But, but I don't know how the NFL works. Right? Look. Out of out of respect for you, I'm not going to take your money. I'm going to get it the two to Fine. one. Fine. How about this? How about this? But, no, 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 no. I'll bet you. And if okay. you win, charity of your choice. Give me odds, though. Oh, now you need odds. Yeah. But if you think the Patriots are going to win, you don't know how the NFL works. Correct. You, you, you can't have your cake and eat it too. I I can have both this angles is a, this here. Is a step. Just because this is I'm a step. taking advantage of a market that's wildly misguided. Just because you're trying to offer me a bad market doesn't mean I'm an idiot. You don't know how markets oh, work. No, you if you think I'm going to bet you it even out, Falcons are going to beat the Patriots tomorrow. You're an idiot. We've already established that and three you, times. So on this so you are going. To I will bet you at the current odds. You'll bet me straight up. Well, like what's, wrong? what's wrong? What's You're wrong? What's wrong? What's wrong? You're a coward. You're a coward. You're a coward. Because you feel so passionately that the Falcons. And that doesn't mean that I give up. Leg and say that the fa- that, Jack. That's not how it works. This Jack, is the dumbest paid, argument. You, no, listen, listen, listen. You just paid three hundred dollars to quote own the Packers. You have and I got to make that money back. And don't quote it. I own it with its certificate. <laughs> so there's no quotes needed. And this that is has ownership. zero intrinsic value to it whatsoever you cannot do anything that an owner in the nfl can do but i can get fined you can up to half a million dollars for what yes i don't know there's like a lot it's a really bad legal document that i signed <laughs> my name to but but you won't go out on a limb and bet me something I think, that you feel strongly about i will bet it just give me the fair odds like why would i bet it versus you when i can just go over to joe schmo and get it at okay. two to one Give me that explanation. Why here's, I would here, here's why I would do that. Here's the explanation. You feel so passionately and you are willing to say that anyone who thinks the Patriots are going to win does not know the NFL. You said you sure. don't want my money, right? You're a good friend. That's just bullshit. Whatever. That's just you being scared. So I said, I will donate it to the charity of your choice. Sure. I would like the charity to get the proper odds, though. So by declining my offer of even odds, by the transit of property, Jack Settlement... <laughs> Your snapback sports king despises charity. I'm done with you. Fam, if you want money, You're scared. bet the Falcons. If you want ma- bet money, the bet, Falcons. The, bet the Patriots. We are going to make you guys money, though, because we've got underdogs, people's pick them. Shout out to the fam. Abe, I don't know if I've had a colder cold streak in my entire life than the pick them streak I was on. I, I'm not kidding. I think I had lost. What's colder, the around. Pickham streak or the I Ravens, lost. Dolphins, Texas football, Texas basketball? Next uh, one. Next one. We killed it off. We're USA good to go. Loses Beat the to Pacers. Eagleson's no. home country. No, no. You don't see. You don't even follow the footy. Anyways, people's pick. We, no, we played Jamaica. They played Mexico, but oh. they moved above us in the standings. Mm, gotcha. You get people's pick by Eagleson. Gotcha. People's pick them. <laughs> I'm bringing the money back to you guys. I'm taking my Falcons winnings, which I've already cashed mentally. I'm taking it at 33 to win 330 for the people. Here we go. Abraham, what's your first pick? First pick, Kyle Pitts under 63 and a half yards. Dud. Why? Because the Falcons are winning. They're going to play with their best player. Exactly. What were those last two words you just said? Their best player. That's three words. Best player. What does Bill Belichick do better than any coach in NFL history? He takes away your best option. Ride the coattails of the greatest quarterback ever. Or Mac Jones. He takes away your best option and makes you beat him another way. The Falcons will be without Calvin Ridley. Julio Jones is in Tennessee. Cordell Patterson was on a snap count because of an ankle injury and might not play tomorrow. And that leaves Kyle Pitts as the best option for the Falcons. Because Bill Belichick will focus on Kyle Pitts, he will go under 63 and a half. And I think that's, that's a lot of logic, which you don't really find me doing. 
That is, yeah, that's probably a bad sign if we're being honest here. True. All right, but I, I get the logic. I hear you. My first pick, Damian Harris, under 61 and a half rush yards. You've got Harris coming off an injury. Stevenson looked amazing last week. Brandon Bolden got a couple of touches. And even if the Patriots somehow, by the grace of God, won this game and they had the game script, I still think you, you would need... You won't bet me when you're using the words grace of God. 14 carries to coward. get there. And on a short week, I don't see the need to really force feed Damian Harris. So unless he breaks one, which is obviously, of course, how you lose an under, I like his under 61 and a half rush yards. Thoughts? That's good analysis. Sure, sure. Okay. My next one is Hunter Henry, snapback fam, over 32 and a half yards. Reason number one, the bump. Reason number two, he's gelling right now. I feel like every time I look, Hunter Henry's in the end zone. Here's a big football term that the, the big M's like to use. Mac Jones's security blanket. <laughs> Mac Jones has pretty much not had to make a decision all year. And that's what the Patriots offense is. Tom Brady hasn't had to make a decision in 20 years in New England. And look, it brought him seven Super Bowls. Hunter Henry You're is... You're a hater. No, I'm not. I'm just a realist. Um, Hunter Henry is that security blanket for uh, Mac Jones. I think this is going to be a high-scoring affair. I think Mac Jones and Matt Ryan are going to be throwing the ball a lot. And who's he going to throw to? Dallas and fucking Aguilar? No. <laughs> uh, have you ever played the rivals portion of Pick'em? Like, have you ever made a selection from there? No, I have not. Okay, so right next to Pick'em. Yeah, I was a little be... weirded out that I didn't see a quarterback under five rushing yards with his over for you. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to take Matt Ryan. I saw four and a half and I saw like two and a half. I was like, oh, yeah. Jack. These are both the Jacks right here. I wanted to take Matt Ryan, but I think he's going to be kneeing it out. So I, I stayed away. Um, <laughs> so the rivals function is right next to pick them. It's the same functionality or over under right next to over under. You, it pits players against each other. So our fourth one, which they do have a rush yards uh, rivals for the quarterbacks, but I'm going with the pass fun. yards. I'm going with the pass yards. I'm going with Matt Ryan plus one and a half against Mac Jones passing yards. I don't really get this line. Like Mac is playing fantastic, but they're seven point favorites. So if people think they're going to win, they're running the ball game script with, yeah. With that being said, it's not like he throws deep down field. So for, for Jones to really beat him out, you're expecting a bad performance from Matt Ryan. Like I said, it's just not happening. This kinda, would be MVP. This will be MVP Matt Ryan. The reason this bet sucks is because I kind of love that one. It's like Matt yeah. Ryan. You're, every time you look at the scoreboard, Matt Ryan has like 54 attempts and like 390 <laughs> yards. Right. Like that. Every time you check right. the win or lose, it doesn't matter. And then every like, time you look at a, a any type of Patriots quarterback, whether it be Tom Brady, whether it be Cam Newton, whether it be Mac yeah. Jones, you see like I don't know, 19 of 26 for 180 and two exactly. touchdowns. Exactly. Yeah. Like Jimmy G's numbers from Monday night, essentially, which was yeah. like he was 11 for 11 to start the game for like 90 two yards uh -huh. like Abe was like Jimmy G doesn't throw for over 250 he scored 31 points and I don't think he crossed like 150 yards so that's the people's pick up so Damian a Harris long way to say Abe was right Damian Harris under 61 and a half rushing yards Mac Jones to have less passing yards than Matthew Ryan Hunter Henry over 32 and a half receiving yards and Kyle Pitts under 63 and a half receiving yards that's the people's pick them ride it because we're gonna hit um, let's move to the association after the break. We'll do our week 11 NFL preview last night, uh, Tuesday night for those listening on Thursday and beyond the warriors played the nets in what people want to call the NBA finals preview. Wait, a I think, I feel like you're that textbook person that wants to say that, but I wasn't even saying anything of those sorts. I'm with you. Like, I don't think the warriors today with this team our title winners or really can get there. The West is just so open. Like who's the best team in the West? I, I'm you think that. Sure. Cause I picked them to win it all. And like Westbrook just is not you. The West is kind of just the NFL in a whole. Everyone exactly. Sucks. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a big pile Meanwhile, of shit. You got teams like the Sixers and Knicks that are going right. through the slums of the East and exactly. trying to keep our heads above water. Exactly. So, my take on the Warriors in general is Jordan Poole, James Wiseman, Wiggins, and Picks. Can you get someone interesting at my the exact, deadline? Exact. My exact comments were going to be that. Yeah. So it's we're not going to be a Brett. 
you are aligned. It's not going to be a Bradley Cat. Beal because I think it's Cat. I I think a team of Cat, Draymond, Iguodala, Curry, and Clay. Did you just name Iguodala? <laughs> <laughs> I was before, Iguodala. before Curry and Clay. <laughs> no, no, I was going from big to small. Actually, that that's what happened. It went cat. Draymond, I think you Iguodala. actually should have went Otto Porter before Iguodala. <laughs> Guy hits one <laughs> sick buzzer beater, and Jack thinks he's Finals MVP. You Iguodala. know, you know, Iggy's gonna be playing thirty minutes for no reason. Fade Point the being, universe, baby. I I think Cat is actually the most intriguing. Although now that I say it, Wiggins, there's no way Wiggins gets traded back to the Timberwolves. Um, but we we agree they need that superstar piece. Yeah, they they just are playing with a bunch of all stars right now. No real final MVPs on their team other oh than Iguodala. Other than other than Iguodala, <laughs> other than Iguodala. So it's like Iguodala is at this point in his career where he's old as dust. And like, sure, he's obviously not his Finals MVP form. Who is going to take that load on their back for the Warriors? Because with Durant gone, I with Iguodala, with can Iguodala just, 37 can just, years old. Can we move past this bit? What? No, okay. <clears throat> that is a bit. And I have to admit, for the first time in my life, it probably has to do because he played LeBron in all those finals. I'm a diehard LeBron fan. Then he teams up with he, Durant teams up with him. I am finally enjoying Steph Curry as a basketball player. Don't let it. Don't get it twisted. Draymond Green is nowhere close to that. <laughs> like him hitting that three last night and barking at Durant actually made me want to throw my head into a wall. <laughs> I still despise that man. Stay focused, the, Dave. Stay for focused. The, for the first time in my life, I'm truly watching Steph Curry, enjoying Steph Curry play basketball, and it is something. Put your hand down. It I, is I need something him, I, to marvel at. Okay. You know how for years you always used to say, you don't get to enjoy LeBron. You don't appreciate LeBron. I'll say. You still don't. It's probably a bigger sin to not have enjoyed Steph Curry than LeBron. No. Yes. No. Yes. Why? Steph is the most fun player to watch in NBA history. Depends on what your definition of fun is. <laughs> like if well, you're fun cynical, for LeBron like if you're, fans if, is. If you're cynical like me in the head. Like your right. answer to I, that question would be, I loved watching Alfred Payton play basketball. <laughs> right. But, but I'm not like that, but yeah, I'm but I, I'm glad Steph you're in on step. And it's like, wait till you see his gravity, like start to pick up on the gravity. No, I know like, that. I know, I know all that stuff, but like I used to get like the things that used to get under my skin a lot was probably the fact that he was beating the shit out of my King. Um, <laughs> but just like, the cockiness, the I don't, and now I kind of find it a little cool. It's unbelievable, and he's maybe getting better. He's on pace to break his record by a decent margin. He's shooting more efficiently, and let me put it in perspective how good of a shooter Stephen Curry is. We know how he's guarded already, right? He, if you leave him open, he'll literally look away from the shot, taunt your entire stadium, and just dance his nuts on your face. If you're covering him, though, right, he comes back to earth, barely. Kevin Durant, the greatest scorer of all time, as some would say. His prop last night was two and a half threes. Steph's was five and a half three-pointers. Like, here's a, like that's nuts, though. It's crazy. He, 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 here's a question. Well, that was like, yeah, when you would look at LeBron's final stats, like on his second or last year in Cleveland, his finals props in the game, it was like, over under 38 and a half, over under 11 and a half, over under nine and a half. Like that doesn't happen. Like they're telling you he's a God, but let me ask you a question. And I think this is fair. And I, I think you have to think about this. Is Steph Curry better at shooting than Justin Tucker, but is it kicking? No, no, really? He's not. He's not. I, Tucker. Uh, Jack. Okay. Think about this. Justin Tucker is the greatest kicker of all time. I feel like we've discussed this, right? It's like you put Steph at the top of the key in a no, practice No, no, that's not gym. what I'm saying. That isn't what I'm saying. I'm saying relative to all the greats that have come before them, is Steph Curry's gap between him being the best shooter of all time versus the second, let's call it Ray Allen, Reggie Miller, bigger than Justin Tucker and I don't know, Vinatieri, Sebastian Janikowski. I think it is. I actually think Tucker's gap might be bigger. Really? So Tucker Tucker has... doesn't have the Tucker doesn't have like the accolades though. 
He, what do you mean? He has the sick- longest kick in NFL history. He's a pro bowler every single year. He's first that's team a all lot pro. Of, that's a lot of regular season things. For, uh, well, you just you just went on a five-minute rant how the Warriors only have Iguodala as their finals MVP. Yes, I'm sorry that Justin Tucker has no regular season MVP awards. No, I'm saying, no, I'm saying he doesn't have any game-winning playoff kicks. Yes, he does. Of, yes, he does. Any Super Bowl. Like, Vinatieri hit like <laughs> He three. won a Super Bowl. <laughs> Tucker was on the team when you guys won the Super Bowl? Yeah. Yeah. He was the But kicker. that was before he was great. That was this I mean, yeah, he was like a second year player. I actually think or he was Steph's a, a better shooter. Steph is more of the greatest shooter of all time than Justin Tucker is the greatest kicker of all time. I don't know. Because can you debate that Tucker's not the greatest kicker of all time? I actually think you can debate it more than you can Steph. What Steph's been doing recently has no. It's no. no, no I'm saying what Steph has done over the past two years, like three years. Jack, pe- he's going to set the all-time three shooting record this season in like 400 less games than the first person. I know that's fucking nuts. I know he's really good. Tucker though is equivalent, like. Like the Justin Tucker, Tucker that just missed a field goal yeah, against the Dolphins. But when when the reaction. When a kicker can capture Twitter for missing, right? When the entire feed's like, oh my God, he missed. Oh my God, this Cody, is insane. Cody Parkey did it a few years ago. <laughs> right. The Bears-Eagles playoff game. Point being, they're both excellent. I want to talk about the Nets. And more importantly, my guy, Stephen A. Smith. I used to be a huge Stephen A. Smith fan. And, and the M's, the M's as we call them. Look, clickbait has become a thing, and for good reason. Everything's quick. Everything's fast. You kind of got to be with the times or you get lost in the sauce. And so I respect Ooh, that was a bar. I respect when you you use clickbait. We we use clickbait for our here to argue thumbnails. We use- I, I was going <laughs> to – I actually meant to bring that up. <laughs> well, the there only was reason- a, the, the headline in the last episode. Which one? Did the Rams make the biggest mistake in NFL history? Did they? <laughs> Watch to find out. So, look, you have to use them to get people in. But, Chess, not checkers. But Stephen A. has become, like, you don't have to do, like, the most extreme clickbait ever, right? Like, that, for, like, a little two-minute Twitter clip, that, to me, just feels extreme. So, most recently, he's come up with uh, LeBron will never win a title ever again. That's not clickbait. That. It's factual. Yeah, it's factual. Uh, but, like, it just... He hates Lamar and he uses like, like he'll say crazy shit like, um, I don't know, like Matt Ryan's better than Lamar. But the one I want to talk about is, what did he say? Kevin Durant made the biggest mistake of his life or something by going to Brooklyn. Yeah. And don't you regret not coming to to the the Knicks? Knicks? (laughs) Um, I don't think I'm surprised you're not with that. Oh, I'm obviously with it. I'm just more annoyed with Stephen A. at this point. But Listen, you got to take Stephen A. for what he is. He's not a. He's not an analyst. He's not a. Con- he's a. He's an entertainer. He is. But that's he, my point. He, what, he what's what he need Chappelle the clickbait for? Comedy. What's he need the clickbait for? We're gonna tune in regardless. What, what do you need the clickbait for? Because I'm a little guy. I'm a little guy. I saw there. you post a view or two. You're not no <laughs> little guy, Mister Liquid. That's good clickbait. Um. Well, what do you think about the Nets? Though? They get blown out by the Warriors. They they were on a really big win streak, and they were playing really good basketball. He also said Kyrie should be cut. Right, right. Like, that's the <laughs> shit I'm talking about. Also true. Um, come to the Knicks. Are we panicked he, on yeah, the he Nets? Can't play, he can't what, play in the Knicks. Either. What's our take now that 15 games are kind of through? The thing with the Nets is, one, are you sitting down? I am. Kevin Durant's best player on planet Earth. I said it. I think that's the first time I ever said it on public airwaves. But the th- the biggest thing with the Nets, James Harden's averaging 19 points a game. Like, that's the issue, is that they can't figure out a way to get James Harden and Kevin Durant working together in a cohesive team. Their te- they're not a team, right? Their rotations are so sporadic, game after game. Sometimes LaMarcus Aldridge is in there just being effective in the second quarter when everyone goes to their bench last night, you don't see him until four minutes left in the third quarter. It's like, and then last night, Kevin Durant meets Gary Payton jr. At the rim and blatant foul. Everyone saw put his hand on his chest, fouled him twice. 
And they were talking about why did Steve Nash challenge that? Now, the Nets are down 17 or whatever with six minutes left in the third. But they said, because Kevin Durant wanted to. They don't have a I respect that. I respect respect it too. I respect it too. But to me, that says when I'm seeing, like, you're not being consistent with your rotations in the regular season, barring injury and everything, and and the coach is just sitting there. So you're red flagging Nash. Yeah, I mean, what 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 has he done? No, I, I I thought he actually like normally last year, right? You you get all those pieces together, and like they always blame the coach. I feel like people didn't really put it on Nash last year. I thought they actually liked what he did overall. Well, they didn't get embarrassed, right? They lost to the NBA champions by a toenail. Right, and and then how he's dealt with the Kyrie situation, he's been pretty strong. And of course, if they continue to struggle and continue to be the Knicks' little brothers, like. I understand that the big M will put more pressure on them as they deserve. If what, if what, I mean, I'll continue to harp on it, but if what happened and is happening in Brooklyn happened in New York, in, in actual New York, I mean, it would be if they had Durant Harden and they look Kyrie and they were 10 and six and they didn't win the title last year and their star player wasn't playing because of, it would just be crazy. But I I'm not panicked on the Nets only because I think Kyrie comes back, but I've been consistent from game one. I don't think the Nets are the best team in the East without Kyrie Irving because I just don't think their team's that good. Well, if you're talking one through fifteen, no, they're not. But I'm talking one through eight. Though, without like, without Kyrie Irving, I still have them as the favorites to come out of the East. I really do. Wow. But it all to, that it is all the comes first time down. you said that on public airwaves too about not acknowledging your Sixers. But when it comes down to it, <laughs> the thing holding the Nets back right now is this isn't the James Harden right. that we know, right. and nobody knows if it's the new rule changes in the league or if he's just blatantly struggling. Like Dame, like nobody's really worried about him. Same reason nobody was worried about Dame. Um, but these rule changes are something to point the finger at, and if James Harden can become. Eighty percent of what James Harden is, that's a top fifteen that's a top twelve player in basketball. Yeah, I mean he's like playing at fifty percent of what we normally see. It's it's crazy. I haven't watched a ton of him, but uh Knicks will sweep the nets. All right, we're gonna take a quick break after the break, NFL week eleven, and we'll hear from Eagleson. We'll be right back. Football season is finally here, and where are we playing all season long? It's on Underdog Fantasy. Underdog Fantasy has Pick'em and Rivals. They are the most fun way to get some action down on the games. Follow me and follow Underdog Fantasy on all social platforms to follow along for my plays. Do Pick'ems, do Rivals, and make some money along the way. And for now, use the code Jack and get a deposit bonus when you join the team. Let's go! Football season is finally here, and if you're trying to get out to a game, whether it be college football, NFL, or when basketball comes back around, use the code JACK at TickPick. TickPick is the absolute best way to get your tickets for the big game. They do concerts, too. They do pretty much every event you could want, and the best part is they don't have fees. The price you see is the price you pay. Don't believe me? Go to TickPick.com backslash JACK and see for yourself right now. See you at the game. All right, fam, we are back. NFL week number 11. Ravens play at the Bears in Chicago. We're going to dub that. Lamar did not practice today. Uh, First game that we really want to talk about, though, is... Oh, I kind of like the Bears. ...is two teams that I have ownership over. So if you are living under a rock, I am now a co-owner of the Green Bay Packers. Thank you. Thank you. Round of applause. Um, And if you watched... Oh, sorry. I own the Bears as well because Aaron Rodgers owns the Bears. I own the team, which which employs Aaron Rodgers. Transitive property here. You're I a board much, of. I, I you're own a bo- the whole NFC. Why don't you be a little woke? You're a board of governor. I yes, I am a board of a board of governor. Is that how? Is you're, that really what it would be called? That's what the NBA. That's what the NBA does. Gotcha. Um, but. My Packers play the Vikings on Sunday. And Do you get a ring I if they win? I don't think I'm going to get a ring, but we're going like, to okay, lose it blatantly, on Sunday for sure. It blatantly says when you buy Packers stock, this is worth nothing. 
it actually could be worth more than what you paid if you get fined, which please find me that fine print and let's get fined. I would rather not get fined up to half a million dollars, which is in the fine print. Rovell would tweet about you. True. Um, but I like the Vikings on Sud. Packers have won like eight or nine in a row. Minnesota has played so many tight games. And Somebody said on the internet that Minnesota is the greatest, like whatever their record is, team of all time. They are. And Kirk Cousins is literally like a top five quarterback this year. And no one gives a crap because it's Kirk Cousins. And so for all those reasons, including that, what better way to start my ownership than with a loss to Minnesota? Very on brand of you. Yes. I have no reason to pick against the Packers, but everyone on the internet is talking about how the Packers are like so fucking good. <laughs> like everybody is saying they're the best team in the NFC. Yeah. What, what, what am I missing? So you're missing. They have a really good offense led by Their Aaron Rodgers, Devontae Adams, good. AJ Dillon, Jones will be back. So they have a, they have a good offense and their red zone touchdown rate is down. Shout out Warren Sharp. Mm -hmm. Their defense is playing spectacular. And Jair Alexander and Zedarius Smith have not played since week. Correct four. me if I'm wrong, but the Green Bay Packers defense has vastly improved since the second Warren Sharp stepped on this podcast. That is that from the is, Cardinals game on. Yes, that is it's like they've gotten just so hot. I know because we left that podcast. We harped thinking, on that for like 15 minutes. Yeah. So they have been playing spectacular. I mean, they shut down the Chiefs. They who they they shut down the Seahawks. They contained Kyler and the Cardinals. So their defense is playing really well. And people are saying this is the best defense the Packers and more importantly, Rodgers has had since he won a Super Bowl, mm, tallest, which sounds like a tall, great opportunity midget. to look into the Minnesota Vikings. So I'll decide tomorrow whether you don't know how the NFL works tweet goes out regarding the Falcons or the Vikings. But you're a little slut for a short home dog. I, well, the Falcons aren't even short. That's what that's what I'm saying. I'm talking about the Vikings. Yes, of course. Uh, speaking of road... Especially divisional matchup. Yeah. Oh, my God. Are you kidding me? Uh, speaking of road dogs, next matchup is your Philadelphia Eagles with the cleanest path to the NFL playoffs that That's I have true. ever seen versus Trevor Seaman and the Saints coming off a loss in Tennessee. Back-to-back -back weeks on the road. Eagles haven't won in a year in Philly. Oh, uh, no, no, no. Under a year. But close to a year. Yeah. In almost a year in Philly, it feels like the two point favorited Philadelphia Eagles, who are steamrolling, who are balling. The offense is clicking. The defense is playing well. The rookie wide receiver mm, is. Defense isn't playing that well. Truthfully, better than Jamar Chase. I mean, they have got it all going on right now. They got three first round picks next season. <laughs> I the fucking hate Things you, dude. in the city of brotherly <laughs> love are ripe. Abe, talk me out of Eagles alternate minus. 13 and a half on Sunday. No need. No, no, 13 and a half, pump the brakes. But what's going on in Philadelphia right now? For weeks in the beginning of the year, when things were low, when I was out on the Eagles, everyone and their mothers were screaming from the rooftops, run the damn ball. We weren't running. Like, it's one thing to run the ball like every single play when you have a guy like Lamar Jackson because he physically can't throw. Like everything is a run a run play for the Ravens. The Eagles are finally incorporating the run. I think they've averaged 170 yards in the last three weeks. They've got the two-headed monster of Jordan Howard and snapback fan Boston Scott. Miles Sanders coming back this week. Gabagool's finally gotten his head out of the plate of prosciutto that he can finally start <laughs> calling plays. And I don't get me wrong. I'm not necessarily in on Nick Sirianni. I still kind of hate his face. I hate his T-shirts. It's kind of toned down the pandering a little bit, though, which is cool. The Eagles are rolling, man. The Eagles are rolling. Listen, we've got some good wins this year. We beat the Panthers. We beat the Falcons. Your Falcons. Your Falcons. We beat the Broncos. We beat <laughs> the, the Lions. Those are four quality wins. The Saints are coming to town, supposedly. They have the best run defense in the league, giving up 70 yards or something like small like that. Um, I have no reason. Like you just said, you just laid it all on the line. So maybe you can explain. Maybe you can turn off your I'm an arrogant motherfucker switch for one second. 
and tell me why you believe the Eagles are going to lose this game. But I, I can't. I, I don't know. I, I don't think we are. Wait, time out. I'm the one who alerted you about the Eagles playoff chance. Yes, but that's a calculated scumbag move. How? They won two in a row, and they still have the third easiest schedule because to get to you're the playoff. sucking me. You're sucking me in, and you know <laughs> how that always ends. Like so, to say that's not calculated. So I've been unbiased about the Eagles all season long. I told you they suck. They suck. They suck. I looked at their schedule. And I said, I don't care you that still they think suck. That? Yes, I don't care. <laughs> I don't care that you guys suck. The teams are worse, right? Bet on bad teams to be worse teams, and and that's what you have been doing with the Eagles. You said talk me into the saints or talk me off of the Eagles. There's like a very simple path to how the saints win the game is like they play good defense. Yeah. The Eagles are bad. The saints have a good defense. And like you're you're talking a lot about the run game. I haven't watched, you know, full 180 minutes. The last three games. It's electric. You have. It reminds me though of the stat of like, when Derrick Henry gets 25 carries, the Titans are 14 and 0. So just run the ball. It's like, well, when you're up 41 against the Lions and when you're up three touchdowns against the Broncos, you run the ball more by that nature. So I would be more interested to see like their early success rate early in games, right? If they fall down 13 to 10 to the Saints, does he get away from the run? If they fall down 10, does he get away from the run? That's really what we need to look into. And then I 135 will... yards against the Raiders, 236 against the Lions, 176 versus the Chargers, 214 against the Broncos. Only two teams in the NFL have run the ball for more yards than the Eagles have this year. That is the Cleveland Browns, who have the best duo of running backs in the league. And that is the Baltimore Ravens, who, like I said before, literally run a run play every time because Lamar Jackson is their quarterback. Um We'll see if you guys come behind or go down what it looks like. Um, for example, like the Niners game that you guys lost. Bro, that was in September. I know, but I'm saying like that was a game you didn't need to abandon the run. And it felt like you did, even though Hertz couldn't hit the side of a boat. Um, yeah, now he's balling. Now he's balling. He beat the Lions. So And the Broncos. And the Broncos. So we'll see. We'll see. Next High game. Altitude. Uh, most importantly, rest in peace to Mike White. He had an incredible run. Abe's favorite player in NFL history. Hey, forever enshrined in Canton. But he will be replaced by the actual GOAT. It's Joe Flacco. Elite Joe is back. Elite Joe against the Dolphins. And let me tell you something. While Lamar Jackson may not own the Miami Dolphins, if there's one man on this earth who absolutely owns Miami Dolphins, it's about 29 other NFL teams. It's over the Joe last 25 years. Flacco, elite Joe, Joe Flacco and the Jets, a lock against Miami. We'll hear from Eagleson on that one later. I, I have a statement in regards to the Jets. What are they doing? I get they play in New York. They're a fake franchise. Well, they play in New Jersey. If you change them to the New Jersey Jets, they would officially fall into I almost fit. called – if Brooklyn doesn't go to the finals this year, can we call them a fake franchise? They're in Brooklyn. Like, it's enough, but it's not – we've discussed this. There's fake franchises. All right, we're going to start referring to the Jets on this podcast as the New Jersey Jets. Okay, that's fair. They are, they are a fake franchise. Mike White obviously is coming off a bad game. Um, but it was playing fine before that with Zach Wilson's backup. Zach Wilson is practicing this week. <laughs> He's legitimately practicing. This is the guy that you spent your second overall pick on, whoever it was, and you're sitting him for Joe Flacco, who has no future within the organization. Joe Flacco is Super Bowl champion, Joe Flacco, that one? With no future within the organization. Who, who you lose a pick if Joe Flacco plays a certain amount. Like, I know that Joe, Joe, whatever his name is, Joe Banner is a knowledgeable person. He made good moves as the Eagles. This is guy. a one week move. Out or Joe Douglas. Man. Right? Why? Why is this the move? So then? I'm unfortunately on the New Jersey Jets Twitter because of my old boss at Whistle. And there's a belief that the O line is so bad that they don't want to put Zach back there to get re injured. At which point they were like, well, if they can't put together an offensive line where they fear for the quarterback's life. I read that it was because of Joe Flacco's experience with handling a blitz heavy defense. And the Dolphins are that. I mean, I told you he owns the Dolphins. 
Look, and another statement you made is also going to upset Eagleson because obviously they sit Tua in most situations. Do they announce if he's starting, by the way? We'll see. I think they're going with a two-headed monster. Game of the weekend, Chiefs-Cowboys. You heard Abe on Monday. He made the prediction. Uh, by the way, did I call the Niners? Thank you. Uh, I call the Chiefs 218. And you called the Chiefs that everyone would say they're back. They're six and four. They're top of the division, the AFC West. People think they got a little bit of the mojo back. I personally am on a pump the brakes situation. I think they ran into a perfect situation. They missed out on Aaron Rodgers. The week prior, they played the Giants. The week after, the Raiders are starting to turn into the Raiders, right? We kind of knew that the Raiders were going to fall apart at some po- point. Simple and it market just... correction. The Raiders down, the Chiefs up. Exactly, like, exactly. Like, if, you're saying, if you're saying that about the Raiders, you have to say that about the Chiefs. Sure, That they're sure. back to their ways. Sure. No, well, that's where I, I'm pumping the brakes. I think that they, they found a good situation, and hence they found a three-game winning streak. This weekend will be a really good test for me because the Cowboys' defense has been pretty good. Target Trayvon Diggs, maybe different story, but it has been pretty good. They are playing a really good football team this weekend, and this will be a really good test. test. The Chiefs are playing a really good football team in the Dallas Cowboys this weekend. I'm not saying Abe. I'm not saying the same. The same Cowboys team that lost thirty to. God knows negative seven Abe, to a team. The Eagles beat 30 to 13. Abe, that, the that Bills Cowboys. lost to the Jags. The Bucks lost to Washington. The Ravens lost to the Dolphins. This is the NFL. It happens from time to time. You cut out. You cut out. But what did they, you say after the Bills? They, they came back and they took care of a Falcons team who's then going to beat the Patriots. Like I said, it's all situation on the NFL. It's the same reason they're scheduling situations in the NBA where you just know who's going to win games before the game even begins. Hence why I'm a billionaire betting on these sports. The Chiefs are going to win this game because they're the Chiefs and they're fully fucking back. Like, you know why this is a good podcast, Jack? And I don't care if you disagree and you're listening to this, just exit out of the app. Because you pump the brakes on the Chiefs. We balance each other, my boy. Pedal to the fucking ground on the Kansas City Chiefs over here. They are back. Travis Kelsey's got his swagger back. Pat Mahomes is Pat Mahomes. Andy Reid, Tyreek Hill. Daniel Sorensen had a pick. Yes, the market is correcting yeah. itself all over the place. We are finally seeing the true Daniel Sorensen, which is actually a terrifying sight if you're the Ravens running to the Chiefs in the playoffs. Now Oof. that Sorensen's back, yeah. that's not something like that stiff arm. You don't think that's a poster hanging on his wall, Lamar oh, stiff do. arming him to the ground? Exactly. The Chiefs are fully back, and they're going to beat the Cowboys because, one, they're the Chiefs, and, two, the Cowboys are the Cowboys. So, as crazy as this sounds, because Mahomes threw for like five touchdowns and 390 or Also, did you see Nick Wright said Dallas Cowboys are the number one contender? Did he? So, That's whose, side you, whose side are you really on? Yeah, I, my tweet went viral today because a snap memory that I posted on Snapback four years ago when Nick Wright ranked Brad Stevens as the most important player in the – most important person in the NBA. You had Boogie on in the top five and you started with Brad Stevens? I mean, yeah, it was crazy. Um, I think Mahomes still looked a little off. And it's nuts to say, but he missed some throws that old Patrick Mahomes doesn't miss. And I don't know what that's from, but the Raiders just panicked in all all directions. And I oh, that's in Kansas City. Yeah, please, please, dude. I I'm I'm excited for the game because it'll give us a really good taste of like, are the Cowboys contenders? Are the Chiefs back? So I'm gonna go with the Cowboys. I actually think they're gonna win the game. You're wrong. Raiders Bengals. People are, for whatever reason, the Bengals have played one game since they beat the Ravens. They beat them. They lost to the Jets. They took a bye. Now they're up again. And people are, like, off the Bengals. But after the Bengals beat the Ravens, they were Super Bowl champions. They were winning the AFC North. And now they are the they have the uh, worst odds to win the division, which makes no sense to me because Cleveland's a mess. The Steelers are a mess. And the Ravens, frankly, lost to the Dolphins. Stink. I'm in, I'm in on Cincy. Like I still think they're a good football team, but but the nerds in Vegas know something, and it's really freaking me out. Why is this out. one? Why is it one point? But I'm talking not even one. Why are their AFC North odds so bad with the Ravens' schedule impending? Uh, why are their Super Bowl odds so bad? Like they have a very clear path to win the division, and they're like fifty to one when the rest of the league is like 
25 or 12 or 6. I they must know something about Cincy. We don't I think know. Vegas, Vegas, I just said Vegas because it's going to mess with mix with the word. I'm going to say, I think Vegas just looked us in our face and said the Bengals are cuties. I, I agree. But in order to be a cutie, you have to get to the playoffs. That's correct. Essentially. So maybe they're right. But one point spread at the Raiders. The Raiders are kind of just like you said, the Raiders and back to being in free fall. Remember when the Raiders, the Broncos, and the Panthers were like the good stories of the season? Mm. They're like three, three and zero or something. Well, now the Panthers are I, the good story because Cam's back. <laughs> I think the Bengals are good. I agree. I think they're good. I agree. Nothing more than that, though. No, no not a there, single. There's, not, not, there's no capital letters in the word "good." There's no punctuation. Cute they're just as a button. Cute. They're as like a. a uh, they're the Grizzlies. They're the Grizzlies. Nah. You think they're better? Yeah. Really? They are the... They lost to the Miami Jets. Heat. I mean, they lost... No, no. They're not as good as, as what the Heat are. Like, the Heat are... The Heat have veterans and have experience. Like, yeah, they have... You don't know that I really wanted to say Sixers, but... Yeah, okay. Uh, <laughs> nah, the Bengals are the... Bengals are the Mavericks. How about that? <sighs> sure. Whatever. 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 They're good. They're good. Like we discussed. They're good. <laughs> and nothing more. <laughs> Sunday night football, last game of Sunday, will be Steelers Chargers. Remember when Justin Herbert was the MVP and the Chargers were winning the division and now uh, they stink and can barely beat the Eagles? Well, they're playing a team that couldn't even beat the Lions. And the spread is five and a half. Freaks me out all around. I'm going to stay away from this one. But I think the Chargers are good too. But, but Vegas, once again, telling me, Pump the brakes. Maybe they're not that good. So do you think the Chargers are going to – forget the spread. Do you think the Chargers are going to win? I do. And you think the Cowboys are going to win too? I do. That would put the Chargers back in first place of the AFC West. And maybe Justin Herbert back in an MVP conversation because sure. of how fluid it is. Like you can say, remember when, remember when. They're 60 minutes of football away from being right there again. Yep. So I, I think the Chargers are good with a capital G. How about that? They're better than the Bengals. What's that make the Ravens? Cocksuckers. (laughs) Speaking of cocksuckers, Eagleson, get in here. (laughs) Abe is ragging on your (laughs) – look at his face. (laughs) I just tossed – me and Jack just had the out. Here's a meme. I'm I'm LeBron throwing Jack the alley-oop. The ball just says cocksucker. And Jack's D-Wade about to slam it down, and Eagleson's the basket. (laughs) What up, Eagles? What's up, son? Andrew? Uh, not much. I mean, got some hockey to talk about here for you guys. I'm sure yeah. you're excited. Yeah. Hey, big guy, timer. What's up, big water bottle guy? <laughs> you hydrated? Big water bottle guy. I I don't know. People are getting COVID again, and it's just. It's, oh, I got yeah. boosted. Did you? And didn't get sick either. Wow. Oh, can't, Moderna can't stick. Look at you. Oh, update. Um, Blake Trinan, who I followed, and then remember the whole like USA mask thing. He is, I mean, he's like Don, he's Don Jr., essentially. Which, speaking of, I ate lunch with Don Jr., actually, while I was down in Florida. Excuse me? Yeah, he became a member of Bubby's Country Club, and he was sitting at the bar eating lunch. It was uh, quite the... Quite Did you the, take a picture? Quite the situation. No, my dad said he wants to go up to him and be like, hey, can we get a picture? Hand him the phone and then have him take a picture of us. I thought that was that was that funny. would be funny. That uh, would be funny. Anyways, away from the the politicians, uh, <laughs> we got a minute to talk about the cold ice. So go ahead, cold ice. What the puck? You know the deal. Puck drops in three, two, one, go. Okay, so the Leafs have been on an absolute tear lately, which for a normal person or fan would be great, and I'd just be enjoying myself right now. But because of how this team has scarred me, I'm just waiting for them to disappoint me even more than they did last time. They're on a four-game win streak right now, getting shutouts in two of those wins, which obviously isn't sustainable. So part of me is hopeful that this could be it, but most of me knows that this will blow up in my face. Now, the only thing making me feel a little bit better about this is how awful Montreal is playing. They're 4-12-2, dropping their last three in a row and looking terrible doing it. In the Metro division, Jack, your Capitals have pulled ahead of the Flyers recently, moving into second in the division at 9-2-5, while Philly is still floating around that four spot at 8-4-2. 
It's also notable that Ovi is slowly climbing up that all-time goals list. He passed Brett Hull recently, putting him in sole possession of fourth place on that list. I think he's actually going to pass Gretzky. Now, the Kraken, they have been awful too, which I don't think is really good for anyone. They're 4 10 and 1 right now, and they don't really have any team identity or direction. The ho- you start talking shit on the Kraken, your minute is up. That's why you, you know get what cut off. Yeah. Jack, I, we're on a crash course, man. Caps Flyers. I know. I think it's the content trip vlog that everyone's wanted. It, it is. We've been missing that. We need that. We did How it. old is Alex Ovechkin? He's 37, I would guess. That's it? Yeah. I mean, that's pretty old for hockey. What year, what year in the, the NHL is he in? Are we doing hashtag I want to go 18. 18. Eagleson? 18 sounds right to me. Yeah. Hashtag year 18 for Ovechkin. Is he, like, still good? Yeah. yeah. That's, yeah. They, so they thought that uh, last year he didn't have, like, his greatest year, and they thought, like, Okay, he's it's over. Like he's gonna start regressing from that. Yeah, like hashtag wash Russian, and no, like this year he's like back just scoring G notes Mm -hmm. all day long. So yeah, he's gonna G notes. Is that is that a happy term? It's really. Oh yeah, it is. G G notes and apples. What? Uh, Yeah, I don't know. Oh, assists, (laughs) I guess. Yeah, apples are assists. Where I'm from, when you score a goal, you tinsel some twine. Yeah. Mm Hmm. You You said he might pass Gretzky. Wouldn't that you're saying in? goals number one goals yeah i oh. think he, I, I i think he'll pass him i thought he couldn't get there how many is he need? oh he he for sure can there's a, there's a path it's all laid out he needs i don't know what it is exactly but he needs to even if he regresses from whatever let's say he scores 40 goals this year he, if he plays for just a little bit longer he'll probably pass him That'd you heard awesome. it jack ovechkin all-time goals leader eagles playoff chances handshake in the middle the path is there <laughs> the path, path is, is there, there. Uh, any other comments, Eagleson, on Joe Flacco taking you guys? Uh, well, I was just bar? gonna say, I like, I you can't say that that's a lock. Joe Flacco and the Jets over the Dolphins. They like the Dolphins just beat the shit out of the Ravens. I don't think you have any right. Uncorrelated, completely uncorrelated. I th- I think they're correlated. You can't you just can't say that. They like so no so let's, no. Let's, they're let's, the let me, Jets let me, and it's Joe okay. Flacco. Eagleson, I think Andrew, a- Jack, 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 Shh. Andrew. Yeah. You just said something that says, you said three words that stuck to me. It's the Jets. Yeah. In 29 or 30, how many teams are there? 32? 32. In 31 other cities in America, people utter these three words. It's the Dolphins. Not, they not in Baltimore, they didn't do that. And yes, we no, did. But they do, they or did. sorry, they did and it didn't go well. And they have done that for the last 25 years. Wait, the Jets wait. made two AFC championships in a row. I don't know where we got this misinformation. The Dolphins won a playoff game 21 years ago. Oh. Yeah, it hasn't been cut, the full Cut that 25. part out, then. Yeah. Cut that part yeah, out, then. Yeah, yeah just <laughs> From a an ma- audio standpoint. I don't want to be... I don't want to be corrected and make myself look like an idiot. Yeah, so if you don't cut it out, I just want to apologize. I did not mean 25 years. Please, please do not cancel me. <laughs> the Dolphins haven't won a playoff game in a respectable <sighs> Thank you. two decades. Yes. 2.1 decades. And 2.1. their last playoff win came against Peyton Manning. That's that's a lot of respect. That's something. But Eagleson, you touched on it's Joe Flacco, and you said it in a condescending tone, which just makes no sense because, as I said, <laughs> Joe Flacco owns your franchise. He is the owner. Okay, let's do a little. Uh, Are there more owners of the Dolphins or the Packers? There's- I think the last time that Joe Flacco played the Dolphins, that's when Kiko Alonso rocked his shit and yes. knocked him out. And do you and that remember what the score of the game was? Nope, doesn't matter. It Joe was, Flacco didn't play. I so. respect that. I respect that. It was like it, Joe Flacco wasn't seven. even the quarterback during the game. Yes, so he was. He, For half of it, if even. Yeah, because he put it on the Dolphins in that warrior. half. <laughs> I'm looking up the score He didn't right even now. know where he was. you're a cuck. You're a cuck. <laughs> Dolphins, but, um, Ravens, history. Just like Team Canada, cuck Team USA. They didn't. Ooh. They didn't play. You nut you job. Keep, no, guys, in 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 the hey, standings. Hey, 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 hey! You guys talk about your countries off the air. Forty <laughs> to six. Forty <laughs> to Last six. Time, Eagleson, if you want to take on this, you could say the Finns have the tape they need on Flacco. They just got to correct a few things. Abe, if you can name four and a half points, if you can <laughs> name the player who 
caught the first touchdown of the game, Ravens Dolphins in 2017, I will bet you straight up Falcons Patriots. Wide receiver. Wide receiver. Was it a Dolphins or Baltimore? The game was 40 to six. Eagleson. Rashad Perriman. It could have been a touchdown missed extra point. Jeremy Macklin. How about Go. that? How about that? He was on the and, Ravens? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and Eagleson, just for context, mm-hmm. Joe Flacco and the Ravens scored 20 points in the first half. In the second half, or sorry, in the fourth quarter, they scored 20 points as well. CJ Mosley, 63 yard interception return. Uh, Chris Moore, fumble recovery in the end zone. And Jimmy Smith, 50 yard interception return. Poverty, 20 points from the defense and special teams. Poverty is what you guys are. So enough with you, Joe Flacco. So if you want to parlay the Falcons, the Vikings, the Cowboys, and the Jets. Hit my DMs. Four winners coming this week, week 11 NFL. Eagle, some final thoughts. You guys are ridiculous. That's the worst thing I ever heard. How is that relevant to anything? Us being ridiculous. Calling us Do, ridiculous. You, you're picking you... the fucking Jets. They're That's the like the Jets. least like, okay. ridiculous of all the things I've said. No. You can and, nope. Andrew, nope. as a nope. Dolphins nope. fan, nope. you can never nope. say it's a Jets. It's a Jets. The... It's a Jet. They are the Jets. As it's bad as the, the Dolphins <laughs> have been, they are no, they're the Jets, though. They're the Jets. The Jets have played in two AFC championships in 2008, 2009. You guys have not won a playoff game in two decades. You have one more win than them. <laughs> one. Is that true? They're three and seven, the oh Dolphins. The Jets God. are two and seven. Abe, if Final you were to thoughts. put up a poll, nope. If you were to put up a poll, which team is more poverty between the Dolphins or Jets, I guarantee you the Jets would win that poll. Okay, but we have to <laughs> Wait, do you find print right in the last Well no, in the last two decades. It's obviously the Dolphins. Andrew, you've never seen them win a playoff game, okay? You, you haven't. <laughs> like, I, I'm, I'm with you, man. I get it. It's the Jets, and I'm. you have a leg it's to stand on. But the only way you can't say that, there's few teams in the NFL that can't say that about the Jets. The only other one might be the Dolphins. <laughs> Literally. The, the, no, them and the Lions are the only other ones that cannot say it's the Jets because it's the Dolphins and, and the it's Texans, the Lions. Maybe. Are, no, they had Watson. They had some good, you know. Still do, technically. Yes, they do. <sighs> I don't know what to say. Go Jets. All right, Pat. <laughs> J-E-T-S. Jets, Jets, Jets. Much love. Peace.